control it. Shalom, Yahweh wants to make it. Don't praise us too. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakudash. So, um, give me, we're going to get it right into it. Just give me uh, Isaiah 57. Fifty-seven twenty. All right, this is Isaiah chapter fifty-seven, verse twenty. It says, "But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when they cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my power, to the wicked." Right. So. Wicked in the Bible is referring to Esau, but you also have our people that are considered wicked as well. But the wicked, the wicked of the Bible is Esau, because he is the one who's in control of this world that we live in today. Really, that's it. Um, see what verse eight says. Jump up to verse eight. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 8 it says behind the doors also and the post hast thou set up thy remembrance for thou hast discovered thyself to another than me and art gone up thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it uh, I think verse 13 This is Isaiah 57 and 13. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. So this is speaking about the judgment that's getting ready to take place on this earth, more specifically in America, okay? So we have trouble in times that are getting ready to take place. You know? we, we always we always speak about Jacob's trouble, right? Yeah. So continue? Yeah, keep going. And shall say, Cast ye up, cast ye up, prepareth the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Yeah, take up the stumbling block out of the way of the most high's people, the Israelites. And there's, I mean, there's many ways you can fall in this world, you know? Yeah. Going, in, going into different religions. Right. You know, just being up this world. Yeah, trying to set yourself up for the long run here. It says, for thus stayeth the high and lofty one. Also cannot forget about women as well. Say many great men have fallen because of a woman. So you see how he's so he's emasculated us. He's taken away our identity and nationality. He, he literally beat it out of us. On top of that, our women are completely out of order. You have to set your woman up above you. Exactly. So one of the ways that you take down a nation is by separating the, the woman from the man. Because both of them really need each other. The woman plays a role in the household, and so does the man. They work in tandem. Exactly. The sun doesn't try to outshine the moon, and vice versa. The moon doesn't try to outshine the sun. They work together. They know its role. They work together for the greater cause. This is Isaiah 57 and 15. It says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhibit eternity. Whose name is holy? I dwell in high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. What does that word contrite mean? 
much right, right? Crushed, be contrite, be broken. Yeah, that's it. Crushed or broken. All right, so that's us. Um, finish that. Can I get that scripture? Where it says you're gonna find a broken heart and resign. It says, "For I will not contend forever; neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made." As for the iniquity of his covetousness was I wrong and spoken. I hid me and was wrong. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. Self-explanatory. Says I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. Now give me Isaiah 61. Start from the top. Yep. This is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison of them that are bound. Right, so this is speaking about the Israelites, man. It says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power. Day of vengeance for our power. So you see how the most high works. He operates like that. He doesn't just let wickedness slide, evil slide. And then there not be any day of, of, of recompense. Even in the scriptures, it says, like, even though you see, like, the wicked going forth out here and it seems like they're not catching no hell, the Lord reserves people for the day of punishment. So if they don't get it now, they're just going to get it later. It says, to appoint unto them the mount in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Yeah, trees of righteousness. So when the time comes, we're going to be the people that stands tall and we're going to be the example for the world to look up to. I mean, we are kind of the example to look up to, to to a degree. When you look at Jake in um, the world of hip hop, the world of entertainment, the world of sports, you know? Everybody's trying to be like the next Michael Jordan or the next LeBron, the next Kyrie. You understand? Right. So, so, just, so just picture it like this. We're going to be that shining example to the world, but according to the scriptures, man. Righteousness righteousness we're gonna be right it says and they shall build the old waste they shall rise up the former desolation and they shall repair the waste cities the desolation of many generations and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers you can explain that yeah that's talking about how we're going to have the other nations in slavery and they're going to be serving us in the kingdom of heaven it says but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord men shall call you the minister of our power ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves eat the riches of the Gentiles and in glory we shall boast ourselves alright yeah cause when Yahweh Shai comes back, but 
all the nations have, all their riches, is going to be forwarded unto us. And it's only right because when you look throughout history, how has Esau gotten his riches? He's gotten it through robbery, through deceit, Ill -gotten through, game. through violence, extortion. It says, For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall wait, wait, wait. For, for, we shall have double. Read that again. It says, for your shame, ye shall have double. So we're gonna, so we're gonna get what we deserve and then some. So picture that, brothers and sisters. Now you see why the apostles you know, and the prophets during the time of Yahweh were so eager to, re to restore the kingdom, to receive the kingdom. Because they knew that the life that they was living back then isn't, wasn't nothing to what, to what we have coming to us in the future, in the kingdom of heaven. Once it's established on earth. What did he say? Um... What you lose on this side, roughly paraphrasing. Matter of fact, I should, get it. I should, just get it. Is there more in Isaiah 61 or are you good? Yeah. Okay. This is Mark 10 and 30. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the world of the come eternal uh, and in the world to come eternal life so that's so that's to the that's really the importance of the king that transfer of power so that we can have peace as a people this is also, also matthew 19 and 29 says the same thing it says that everyone that hath forsaken houses brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life so whatever you lose on this side don't worry about it the lord is going to hit you on the back end yeah, don't worry about your family members that aren't in the truth if you are the elect of course Worry about yourself, man. What does the scripture say? Um, let every man work out his own salvation. Yeah, let every man trouble. work out his own salvation with fear and trouble. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 7 says, For ye shame, for your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Wait, 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 an everlasting covenant with them. So nothing has changed. The Lord made a covenant uh, during the time of the Exodus, right? It's the same thing now. And it says... And it says, you know, make an everlasting covenant with them, showing you it's a, a certain people. You know, them is possessive. It says, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. So we're going to be famous in the kingdom. Literally, that's what it says, right? right. They're gonna be like, oh, oh, look at them guys over there. They got that, they got that glow, that shine. That, yeah. Those them Israelites. They got that nice, tall stature, and they have spiritual power. I want to be like them. I wish I could be an Israelite. Right. But, uh, what was that? Balaam or Balaam? That's in um, Numbers. When you said he wished at his latter end that he could be an Israelite, that's because.
because he saw into the future, the most I allowed him to see into the future what the Israelites would be like in the kingdom of heaven. And he, and he, and he literally said, I wish I could be one of them. Because we're going to be the ones on the top. It says, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Again, he blessed a certain people, a particular people. He says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my, in my power. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Uh, that's it on that. You got something? No. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to be of me, gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that they, that they may see. So that's speaking about the Israelites. It says, I counsel and as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. It's like when you're first, you know, introduced to the truth, you know, what you're hearing in your spirit, like, like you just, you believe it. And you know, that's the Lord at the end of the day, giving you the eyes out, opening your eyes so you can see. And the longer you, you, you know, remain faithful in this thing, your spirit will grow. So if you have the eyes to see, you'll realize that nothing else makes any sense. Yeah, this place is wicked. It says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. See, like... The spirit is, is what's powering us to be out here on these highways and byways, giving you the truth. The spirit. Because we wholeheartedly believe this. Right. We could, we could picture the destruction coming to Babylon, the missiles dropping. And if that's not enough, go read a news article. Go watch the news. All this talks about World War III growing. I mean, what more, what more signs do you need? We're witnessing the prophecies of the Bible getting ready to play out right before our eyes. And we, we see, we see it clear as day. Like we're not confused. We're not on the fence. Like we know what's coming before this place. And we believe it to be true. Thus saith the Lord. Uh, you got something? Oh, uh, no. All right. This is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Oh, well, that's a beautiful one. It says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So if there's no vision, then you're ultimately going to meet your demise. If you don't have the vision or the spirit to, to really lock in and understand these scriptures that we're bringing out, then, like I said, it's not going to work out for you when it's all said and done.
gonna be missile food. We get caught up in Jacob's trouble. It says a servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at his at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Yeah. Uh, you know that scripture where it says pride cometh before destruction? Before your fall? So there you go. It's always best to have that humble mind state. Because if you think that you're a person that knows it all, you're, you're in that position, and you don't want to listen to other people around you, because sometimes it's, it's good to do that, you know? Uh, put your heads together with somebody, and, um, you know? Right. Come, up, come up with a conclusion to a certain matter. That's what, that's what wise men do. Right. And your pride, like, you know, some people's pride, it's like if they won't, they won't allow them to come out here and listen to us because we're just regular men. If we was up in a mega church or something, people would probably be more inclined to hear. Yeah, because people are used to that setup or that style of teaching. They think, they think, oh, where's your church? Why don't we have a church? If you don't got a church, then you ain't nothing. That's what they think. You don't have much going for yourself. You don't have any followers. Meanwhile, passed up and they're feeding you bullshit and you making them rich. Right. So what we do is very simple. All right. Put up videos on YouTube, come out here on the highways and the byways. You don't need no damn super super mega church. Right. For the 501c3. Because then you got to abide by somebody else's terms and their guidelines. Right. You put on a leash. Exactly says whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul he heareth cursing and bewareth it not the fear of a man the fear of man bringeth a snare but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe many seek the rulers favor but every man judgment cometh from the Lord an unjust man is an abomination to the just and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked Job chapter 30 verse 24 how be it he will not stretch out his hand to the grave through the cry though they cry in his destruction do that in the NLT this is Job chapter 30 verse 24 in the NLT surely no one would turn against the needy when they cry for help in their trouble. Did I not weep for those in trouble? Was I not deeply grieved for the needy? So I looked for good, but evil came instead. I waited for the light, but darkness fell. My heart is troubled and restless. Days of suffering torment me. I walk in gloom without sunlight. I stand in the public square and cry for help. Remember Nas said, um, it's like a, he said it was, it was like a dark cloud over him. It was tomorrow for him to see tomorrow. Yeah. So Jake is always crying out when he's going through something, you know? Or he's in a sunken place. And some people, um, when they go through things, they act through their actions. In the moment. Yeah, in the moment. And they might not even know that what, the, what they're doing or why they're doing it, but really it's their soul crying out. 
You see these guys that are in the streets, that are uh, Israelites, obviously, and that are com uh, committed to committing crime, you know, that are always back and forth, in and out of jail. What they don't realize is that they're suffering from the curses of Deuteronomy. Right. It's one thing when you catch in hell and you don't know why, you know, you just start to get frustrated, you know, like, damn, I can't catch a break. But when you have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and you, you know why you're catching hell, it's a totally different feeling. Like, when you catch in hell, you just be like, you know what it is. Like, all right, either I'm being punished, well, I'm being punished, but ultimately, my spirit is also being built up. Yeah. Or your spirit could be broken down. Yeah. And then people start acting, acting outward, you know, with, with, the, with the aggression towards their own brother or towards their own sister. It doesn't make it right. Okay, going back to Proverbs 29 and 20, it says, Thou, it says, Seest thou a man that, haste, that is hasty in words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. You know, when you just quick to speak, you know, quick to have a reaction to something, you know, you're gonna be put in a negative position. But if you could just sit back and be patient, you know, you'll be better off. Back to Job, this is Job 30 and 27. It says, my heart is troubled and restless. Days of suffering torment me. I walk in gloom without sunlight. I stand in the public square and cry for help. Instead, I am considered a brother to jackals and a companion of two hours. My skin here, because nobody wanted to listen to him, right? It says, instead, I consider a brother to jackals and a companion to owls. My skin has turned dark and my burns burn with fever. My heart plays and meets sad music. Yeah, because uh, then Job, he went through he went through so much turmoil that the Most High even plagued him with, with illnesses. Yeah, right. Boils. That's what this. Is. So that's heavy. It says, and my it said my heart plays sad music and my flute accompanies those who weep. If I'm not mistaken, Jake came up with the blues. The blues music? Yeah. The scriptures say Jacob is a former of all things. Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. That's it right now. You got something? Start from the top. This is Zechariah 14 and 11. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house rifled, and the woman ravished. Where are you at? Isaiah? Zechariah. Zechariah. It says in half. So this is speaking about Jacob's trouble. Start from the top again. This is Zechariah 14 and 1. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house houses rifled. And the woman ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So it's 
So the Lord is going to fight for us ultimately in those times. And Jake is going to be catching hell during those times as well, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because what's that scripture where it says a man shall be known as a, as a hiding place? A man shall be considered a hiding place? So when all hell breaks loose, when people aren't going to be held accountable for breaking laws, people are going to be like, to hell with it. What do I have to lose? I'm not going to have to suffer any consequences. So when dudes get around women, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? And you know Jake, not even just Jake, you know, a lot of different men of other nations, they have that frustration built up. Because now we're living in a society that promotes feminism, okay? That that uh, handicaps men financially. Now it's no longer to the point where you could say that um, most men are the breadwinner of the household. Because how 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 could you really say that when you gotta have that joint income with your woman? You know, most people, most people, most households, they have a dual income. So. You're really less committed to being able to raise your families and so on and so forth. So that's how the society has people. Society has people stressed out and not sure of what's 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 to come in their future. You know, a lot of people live day to day. I got that you just quoted. This is Isaiah 32 and 2. So then a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So when them evil times come, those bad times come, these women that are high on their horse and they have that pride on them, they're gonna be brought down and humbled. Yeah. I'm telling you, them days that them days that come, where it's gonna be martial law troops, it's just gonna be lawlessness out here. Them, them, you women with the BBLs, that shit's gonna be a curse on you. Exactly. People That's, gonna be sizing up the women and be like, Hell yeah. "Who's with you?" Yo, you, you go, you. <laughs> they gonna be jumping you. Because, because that's one of the first things that happens when a society collapses. Because people are just gonna be doing what they really, what they really want to do. Yeah. You see that in the movies like Purge, The Purge. People are gonna be breaking into people's stuff, rioting, looting. People out here, they're wicked as hell, but they just, they're just hiding behind a mask. They're, comp they're trying to discover it. But when you're able to be just free and do what you want without no repercussions, people are gonna be losing their minds out here. Uh, Zechariah 14 and 4 it says and his feet shall stand in in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Ye, yeah, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Nah, that's all right, bro. Yeah, we good. Nah, no, thank you. No, thank you. I'm a bit fast. I'm nah, all right. Nah, I'm all a right. Christian, Christian too. Come on. Nah, that's don't, okay. don't, don't reject the blessing. This is sealed. I'm okay. You guys alright? Yeah, I'm alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, get that scripture where it says bring a prophet from coffee and get a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice gesture that you did. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Very nice gesture. We, we, I'm Christian. I, uh, we also, you know, we go spread the gospel in Queens. I'm from Queens. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's why. I see, you know, it's sweating a little bit, you guys. So, yeah. I'll be here, but that's fine. Alright, no, I'm alright. Thank all right, you. Alright, guys. You know you're an Israelite, right? What? You know you're an Israelite, right? Yeah, of course. You know? That's good. Right. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, is getting ready to make his return. Yeah, we see all the signs. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Revelation. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Matthew 24. Yep. Yeah, he's got it. Got it. Yeah, all right, all right appreciate brother. you. Um, I got this. is Matthew 10 and... I'll
start at 41. It says, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Right, so that, so that man, he's going to get a blessing. Yeah. Ultimately, both sides going to throw him something. Because that was a that was a nice gesture. Right. Now that's love. You know, most people walk around in Babylon and they don't really be concerned about their neighbor. Yeah, they out for their stuff. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you see a homeless person, you give him some money. Yeah. He's so old by him, but give him shit. Give him something to eat, you know. Yeah. So that's, that's in the spirit of Jake. You know, here it is, we on the bottom. We don't really have much to show for as a people. But we still do look out for each other to a certain degree. Yeah, we do what we can. Yeah, we do what we can. And that's in the law, right? The welfare system. We set aside a certain amount of grapes. Give it to the poor. Oh, yeah. There's another scripture in Leviticus where you, you see your brother that's in struggle that, or that doesn't have much help him out. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that ties in with uh, what is it, Romans? Uh, well, unto themselves, get that scripture, please. Because it might be something little to you, but it might be everything to that person. And, and with that, since he came, in a way, he shifted the, the lesson, right. he gave us something. Build on. This is Romans chapter 2, verse 14. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a, are a law unto themselves. I mean, and that guy, he said, he's, he said he's a Christian, so I'm sure he knows some, he knows some scriptures. He mentioned Revelation. He knows other scriptures about like uh, charity and this and that. So he's ten tribes, though. He's, he's, he's sharper than them nigga Christians. Yeah. But at the same time, though, you do got Jake that don't really know much about the scriptures, but at the, but they'll do things that are uh, in the scriptures. It's just in their spirit. Yeah, it's just in their spirit. Right. Like Jake knows better than to try to get with his his, uh, his his brother's girl. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're violating the bro code. Some Jakes don't give a damn. They're wicked. Right. So it varies. Gotta have a balance, right? Moving on. This is uh, Zechariah 14 and 5. It says, "And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains." For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto a zeal, yet ye, yet ye sh shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of the Messiah, king of Judah. And the Lord my power shall come, and all the saints with me. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that the living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. So this is speaking about the kingdom. Yeah. Really. When Esau goes down, when it's time for him to go down, it's going to be like a new day. It says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. See, in that day there's only going to be one, Yahweh. Yeah, it's not going to be Allah, Buddha. Even though Allah, when you break it down, is Hebrew. It means power. It's spelled A-L-E. Instead of A, it's not A-L-L-A-H. 
says, All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananel unto the king's winepress. Benjamin's gate. It says, And men. You're going to be up at Benjamin's gate getting some Jamaican food. <laughs> Says it, men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhibited. That's bad. Let you know this is a future prophecy. Oh, yeah, because we cannot say that this is the case right now. <laughs> and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Uh, you can speak on that. That's talking about when the missiles and the concentrated fire out the chariots destroy hit this place, Babylon the Great. You know, people's eyes got to be melted in their head, and your tongue is going to melt in your mouth. There's only there's only one thing that can really do that. Man. That nuclear fire, man. It makes a lot of sense. That was the point. All right, what I'm doing. something. Now I'm looking at a biblical map right now. So this is. Benjamin's land. You see? Let's see if the camera can see it. Right there. That's just north of Judah. And this is located in the Middle East, right off the Mediterranean Sea. Proverbs 22 and 3 says a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself but the simple pass on and are punished you see measuring the times that we're in where we that we are in you know you gotta you gotta see like the signs and the things that's coming to before this place but the people that's just simple carrying on trying to set up their five-year plan and their ten-year plan they're going to be punished. They're going to yeah. be caught up in the destruction. There's not going to be no retirement, no social security funds. No, there's not going to be none of that. It says, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns, sna thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doeth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child, and he won't depart from what you told him or her. So, we live in Babylon where it's really hard to raise up a family. Going into how, what I was explaining earlier, it's hard to really put that focus into raising your children because both parents have to work nowadays. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of wicked avenues to your child here in Babylon, whether it be through social media, what have you, the school system. Because you have to send your child to school. And if you don't, then what? CPS is going to yep, come, come lock you up. So it's like, do you really have control over your family? Do you really have control over your life? Are we really free? All we are is living in a world and abiding by Esau's terms. Right. Whatever those terms are, they can do whatever they want. When you, when you have the, a two-parent household to train up a child, that child is going to grow up in order. He's not going to be out here like these gremlins. These two-third niggas killing each other and, 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 rapping each, and rapping about it. Yeah, even statistics show that children that grow up in a household of both the mother and the father 
are more likely or less likely rather to um, end up in trouble you know end up in the system right in and out of jail you got that father at home you got that discipline and then you have the balance which is the mother which is the nurture right again they were woman and the man they work in tandem with each other but what's more is when you can really say that you know the scriptures you know who you are and where you come from and that you teach that to your children right because then that empowers them that gives them the wisdom to maneuver in babylon because right, right now we're behind enemy lines right. it's real out here a lot of people are even opting to not even have children nowadays they say that's why well that's not why but that's one of the many reasons why the birth rate is declining you know, because it's just stressful having children now. Yeah, yeah. Everything is expensive. Then you got to deal with the social pressure. You got to worry about feeding them GMO food and all that type of stuff. Right. Because that's what they eat. eating. You ever look out, you ever seen like a can of baby formula, the ingredients of that shit? Oh my God, you giving that to a baby? Exactly. Says, uh, says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it on, another, on a smaller level that's like what um, Yahweh shot his father Joseph was a carpenter and then he, when he grew up he became a carpenter you know that's just that's how that's the way it's supposed to be whatever your father is that's what you do that's yeah. your trade that's how it was in the old days in the ancient world you pass that trade down to your son and then he's able to make a living and then built his family support his family and carry on the legacy right but what do we have to show for it now we got beer weed guns <laughs> aids <laughs> all, all these, these obstacles <laughs> all these ob obstacles it's hard to make it nowadays right it says the rich ruleth over you know, the i was watching the wire and um this, this kid in that show was saying that he said, that's what's really the killing people. The bulls, the cigarettes. Yeah. And that's a lot of what you see in the, the average ghetto, the average hood, you know? Jake isn't really taught and raised to be healthy. Be healthy both in mind and in body. Because if you're not healthy in your body, then that can uh, have an insidious effect towards your mind. Right. Because your diet plays a role in how you behave, how you feel. You see, that's why they don't want us to be like, be like how we are. You right. see, we, we privy to what's going on. We know what's happening. They want you to be docile. They want, they want, they want you fat, dumb, and lazy. It says the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Wait, break that down. Yeah, it's talking about like how in this kingdom, say if you want to buy a home, you gotta go to the bank and get a get credit on your home so now you're a slave because now everything you do you can't you you feel trapped in your situation because you got to pay your mortgage you got to pay your car no you got to pay all these you got to pay all these things yeah and you got to pay for the utilities electric cable again and that's how he still he traps you now you got to go to that punk ass job that you hate every day so you can pay your bills you got to stay at it or else your home is going to go into foreclosure you got to put you, up or you're going to be evicted right you got to put up with your boss's shit so are we really free and he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity and the rod of his anger shall fail he that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. He giveth of his bread to the poor. You saw it's not really helping people out here. Like, they're not trying to make life easier for people. Right. Coming up with ways to make life easier. He's thinking of ways to make your life harder and more difficult. How to, how to have more control over you and oppression. It says, he... That hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Yeah, we just said that. It says, cast out the scorner, and the contrarian shall go out. 
ye strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pure pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. So the way your life is set up, the average person's life is set up, they're just trying their hardest to keep keep their head above water, or some people just uh, succumb to the difficulties of this life. They end up in and out of the system. Either way, they got you. Either way, they got you. The slothful man saith, that's why, let me say this, that's why our people, they envy people that are rich. They're always trying to chase that bag, chase the riches, They're trying to be like the next man. You know, Jake want to be a rapper. Jake want to be an athlete, an entertainer. Because they want to get that, that money. They want the riches. Which, chasing after that, you're selling your soul in the process. Drug dealers. Says the slothful man saying, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of the, the mouth of strange women is a deep pit. He that is aboard of the Lord shall fall therein. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall, the, shall drive it far from it. You try that now, uh, CPS or whatever. Right. You don't come knocking on your door. Is that us to bear the rod spoil the child? Yeah. So you have to lay down some, some, some form of discipline. Yeah. Boundaries. Because a child has a childlike mind. They're trying to get they're trying to get into something. You that's know, they they just curious. Yeah, that's that's why there's that scripture where it says, uh, when you was a child, you did childish things. Yeah, Matter of fact, get that. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. <coughs> when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. So a child is always going to be in a child place. Childlike mindset. And then once they get to a certain age, that's when it's time for them to start being raised up as a man. It says, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Right. And who helps you do that? You're having your father. Right. That, that father figure in the household. Bring him, bring him to me when he's ready to become a man. It says, bow down, the, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within me. They shall with, withal be fitted in thy lips, that they trust many be in the Lord. I have made known to this, I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee now the certain the certainty of the words of truth that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee rob not the poor because he is poor neither oppress, oppress the afflicted in the gate for the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoil them right so everybody's gonna get their just due whether you on the bottom or whether you on the top you know, trying to keep those that are on the bottom on the bottom. So Esau, it ain't looking too good for you. It's not looking good. Violated on all levels. Not even just Esau, also the other nations that are in power. Yep, you played a part in it. it. Says, make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare of thy soul. 
Be not thou one of them that strike hands or of them that are sureties for debts. What is that? What is that? Though? Pledge, exchange, mortgage, engage, occupy, undertake, or give, pledge, be or become, thirty, take on pledge, give and pledge. So in other words, don't be like them that always take, that uh, set people up. Um, one of the words there was mortgage, right? Right. So you mentioned earlier about you know buying a house and now you have to take out a mortgage. Yeah. Again, that's just taking advantage of people. Yeah, that's taking advantage of people because the average person doesn't have a quarter of a million dollars lying around, half a million dollars lying around to just go and buy a house full, with uh, full, full money. They got to take out a line of credit and then so the bank charges you um, an interest, they charge you for the interest so they can make money off you. Right. But you're not supposed to do according to the scripture. Right. That's usual. man got us in a trick bag. Now on top of that you gotta pay you gotta pay taxes. Yeah. Which is that a, that's a whole scam in and of itself. Right. So it's gonna get taken to the whole the whole next level once the paragma comes out. Right. Cause then they're gonna be able to tax you on anything and everything. Whatever they want, they're gonna be able to take. It. Right, they're not gonna be no more just handing in the cash. But you don't gotta pay taxes. It says if thou this is Proverbs 22 and 7 now. It says if thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Remove not a man's ancient landmark. Remember, remember how during the time of the, uh, the Roman Empire, they sacked Jerusalem and they destroyed the temple? They're going to pay for that. Esau's going to pay for that. And then from there, we was never the same. That's when a lot of our people got dispersed throughout the interiors of West Africa. Um, even from the north, south, and to the east, to the west. So that caused a lot of us to scatter. Which really fulfilled prophecy, right? Esau came on ships. And it took, took our people captive throughout the world. Uh, north America, South America. They really call this side of the world the new world, right? They had a, uh, a phrase for it, a term, the new world. Because this side of the world really wasn't, um, it really wasn't that explored much, you understand? And also this place has a lot of minerals, resources, you know, gold, oil, fruits, vegetables that are exclusive to this side of the world. Scripture. This is Micah 2 and 2. It says, and they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. And that's exactly what our enemies have done, starting with Esau. Okay. Like even on a smaller level, I'll read Proverbs 22 and 7 again. It says, if thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? You know, here, if you can't afford rent, your ass is getting evicted. You're going to be put out on the streets. That's not right. That's wicked. Or well, if you can't afford your car, no. Yeah, they come repossess your shit. And your car insurance. And then you're driving dirty. Right. And then this cop pulls you over, they're going to take your license. And you're going to end up, end up in, some, in some more trouble. End up in the slam. Deeper hole. Yeah, that's why he has to pay. None of this is this setup here 
It's not gonna be like this in the kingdom. We're not gonna have to pay rent. You're not gonna have to pay for car notes, pay car insurance, property taxes, buying food. It says yeah, you're not know, gonna bottled see, water. Yeah, you're not gonna see a Jake struggling in the kingdom. Right. Because we're all gonna be rich. Some might be richer than others. Some are definitely gonna be richer than others. But at least you're not gonna be down bad. Yeah. Like you'll have more than enough. So you're not gonna be just getting by. Worrying about if your woman loves you, she's gonna leave you. Right. If your child's gonna become a delinquent. If your child's even yours. Right. <laughs> this, this really ain't a life that's worth holding on to. Right. This life that we're living now. Because we have better days to come in the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. Once it's established on earth. Again, yeah, that's that eye style. We know there's something much better than this. That's what we're holding out of. We're holding out for. Yeah, I mean, what else are we going to do? All right. That's why I don't understand how people that, like, you had the knowledge, you had the understanding, but then you fall back and go back into the world. I mean, I understand how it happens. You know, the Lord, he takes his spirit back from you. But it's like, damn. You know what's going to happen? They're going to take the MOTP. They're going to try to remain in this system and they're just going to eat a milk. That's what it's going to be. You willing to die and give up the kingdom of heaven for this place? Like, I, I just don't get it. Because we know the penalty for the, for the Karabma if you take it. Right. Gonna be, you're gonna be cast into the lake of fire. So even if you wanted to hold on to this, you can't. If you want to be delivered, that's the whole point. Like, when you have that understanding, it's like what for? Yeah. So the most high, he's gonna, he's gonna have that separation, that great separation. Uh, back Proverbs 22 and 28 again. Finish that, we on close. Yeah, there's only one more verse. It says, "Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy father has set." Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. That's it on that. Alright, so with that, we're gonna close. Peace Shalom. to the gods. Shalom.